So broadly, if, if you look at the MapReduce uh, framework, the, the task can be divided into two different categories. So we have the map side tasks and the reduce side tasks. What is included in the map side tasks is uh, the record readers along with the input split and those things. Then you have the mapper, the combine, the partitioner. And uh, broadly classifying on, on the, uh, 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 the reduce side, you will see the shuffle, sort, reducer, and the output format. OK. Now let's understand these things a little, little bit in, in detail. I, I'm sure it's, for some of you, it's, it's just a repetition of your past stuff. But uh, just to put the context here, I'm going to explain a little bit about these. So, uh, so record reader, uh, so this is stuff which is responsible for reading from the input split. And uh, uh, what actually the record reader reads is uh, the bytes, and it's responsible for dividing those bytes uh, uh, along records. And that's, where, uh, that's the input which the mapper gets. Uh, now the mapper is, 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 is the job which is responsible for performing uh, uh, what you do in the mapper is so you, you, you pass the data, you filter the data, and an output from the map is, is key and the value pairs. Okay. Now these key and the value pairs are not very arbitrary. Okay. They are very much dependent on uh, the kind of problem you are trying to solve. Okay, and, and as, as you will see in, 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 in the design patterns that I discuss over the next couple of weeks or three weeks, you will see that uh, uh, manipulating these uh, key values, by manipulating these different patterns emerge. And uh, it's important to understand uh, these things in slightly deeper ways. Then we have the combiner. Uh, and uh, uh, com combiner, so this is something which is... Uh, important aspect of a lot of uh, design patterns. Uh, f uh, so in, in some cases, the combiner might not be very useful, but there are other cases where this can be very useful. So, so uh, patterns or problems where you have a lot of data being transferred across the network from the mapper side to the reducer side, you should ha definitely have a look at using the combiner if, if the problem is such that you can use it over there. Uh, you can get benefits out of some combiners, but there will there will be cases where a combiner might not be useful, and we'll see in which cases it's useful and in other cases where it's not useful. Then the partitioner, uh, this is one of the controls uh, which uh, this framework provides you, and uh, uh, the default partitioner is the hash partitioner, uh, which uh, just hashes your keys uh, and uh, does a modulo on the number of reducers and uh, 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 your key values get transferred to the reducer side. Uh, but there is a way for you to, uh, to write your own custom partitioners, and uh, we'll see uh, in some of the design patterns where writing such things is going to be useful for you. Look at the shuffle side here. OK, so uh, once a partitioner has uh, done the part partitioner on the data collection which is coming out of the mapper, uh, it puts that stuff onto the local disk on the mapper side. And then the reducer for which the data is bent actually pulls that on its on its own side, onto its own machine. So that's, that's the shuffle. Then you have the sort phase. So after the shuffle, the sort happens. And in sorting, uh, again, uh, on, on the reducer side, uh, uh, based on the keys, the data is sorted whenever it's going to be input to a reducer. There are, there are certain important things to consider here, uh, which, which, which uh, we generally tend to miss. So when you talk about partitioner, uh, when partitioner is doing the partition at that time, it, it actually also runs uh, 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 a sorting algorithm, which is uh, uh, which, which actually takes a raw comparator. Okay, and and uh, in some of uh, your patterns, you will see that by using and implementing your own uh, raw comparators, you can influence the behavior of the way uh, the things are sorted. Similar thing actually ha also happens on the reduce side. Okay, so uh, uh, there is a raw comparator which you can impl implement on the reduce side as well, and that helps uh, in, in some of the sorting uh, patterns that we'll see. 
Then the reducer, and this is where most of your analytics and uh, the actual uh, crux of uh, the work happen. And uh, ultimately, uh, the output from the reducer is uh, is, the, is 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 put to the HDFS uh, by this output format. So that's a very uh, quick summary of uh, what the map reduce. Uh, design pattern components are all about and uh, I, I just wanted to emphasize a little bit uh, because these are the tools in your hands. When you're writing MapReduce programs, when you're writing, uh, we're trying to learn about design patterns, these are the tools that you'll have and you will have to manipulate these in some ways to be able to achieve your objectives and that's what those design patterns actually do. Okay. So the question is why do we require map reduce design patterns? Okay, uh, let's 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 attack this problem with with a simple question. Okay, now uh, generally when you have to do a sorting, and when the sort sorting is not on a big data, what you do is you go ahead and use quick sort, much sort, one of these standard algorithms, and they do a perfect job for you. Now when the size of your data really increases to the proportions of big data then you have problems using those sort algorithms. Just, just, just think, can you, can you use quick sort or a merge sort to do sorting on, on MapReduce? It's, it's, maybe we can try to do some things on this, but, but, but you, you will immediately start hitting uh, some roadblocks. And, and the first one you will find uh, that this is MapReduce is not an iterative uh, framework, okay? We, but but the thing is, we still we can still implement iterative algorithms on this framework, but by default it's not an iterative framework. There is there is a mapper on one side, you have the reducer on the other side, and uh, that's it. I mean the inputs uh, come into the mapper, reducer writes to the output, and your job is complete. So you don't really have an iterative framework here. And all those algorithms we were talking about, quick sort, much sort, they require some iterative framework. Okay, so, so the, the framework, as you see, is, is putting restrictions. So there are constraints as far, as far as the framework is concerned. You cannot go beyond what is provided by those frameworks. You have to work with the limitations of that. Okay, let's see what these constraints are. Constraints are. So uh, the rigidly defined stages that must work together in specific ways. So, so when we saw all those uh, tasks which happen in, in the map stages and the reduce stages, you could uh, understand uh, that uh, there is this rigid way of, 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 of uh, operation of this framework. But still, as I said, many algorithms can be recast to this framework and then you can solve your problems at scale. Okay, and, and that's where, that's one of the places where map reduce patterns will come in. Other constraint is uh, the synchronization, const synchronization which happens uh, only at a single opportunity here, right? If, if you look at this whole job, uh, the opportunity for doing a, a cluster-wide synchronization is happening only at one stage and that is during the shuffle and sort, sort stage. Otherwise, your mappers, reducers, any of the other processes that you have inside there, they, have, they actually work independent of each other. If you, if you think deeply, then these are constraints. These are constraints. And that, that, that actually ends up being, uh, uh, that ends up telling you that the programmer has very little control over many aspects of the execution. You don't have much of a control as to where a mapper or a reducer runs, when a mapper or a reducer begins or finishes, which input key value pairs are processed by a specific mapper, which intermediate key value pairs are processed by a specific reducer. Constraints. are making sure that programmer, as I said, right, you doesn't have much of a control in terms of the execution. So they have to work within those constraints. But it does provide you a lot of techniques, a lot of uh, ways of getting around these and solving uh, 
really complex problems using whatever it provides. So let's see what it provides. So uh, the ability to complex data structures as key and value. Okay, and we'll see in some of the examples of the design patterns how just just by by way of uh, creating complex data structures, you can solve problems which would have looked like unsolvable without having those uh, complex data structures. Uh, other things which it provides is user-specified initialization and termination code at the start and the end of MapReduce jobs. Ability to preserve a state in mappers and reducers across multiple input or in intermediate keys. Uh, these two are important things. Uh, there, are, there are times, and we'll see one of the examples in this lecture itself, where uh, you, you want to have s some data structures uh, which, which needs to be uh, preserved across uh, calls to mappers and reducers. Uh, on, on different uh, inputs. So uh, this facility helps in some of the design patterns I'll see. Ability to control sort order of intermediate keys. Uh, now this is something which, which, which you get by the raw comparator about earlier. And this is very important in, in, in cases where you want to do secondary sorts or uh, you want to do uh, a join on, on the reduce side. Uh, this facility comes into picture at that point. Ability to control the partitioning of the key space, so, and this is uh, also pretty much pretty important. Uh, uh, by by writing your own partitioners, you control uh, the working of uh, a few of these patterns. Okay, so uh, what what is the answer that we got on on map? Why do we need map reduced design patterns? Because of the constraints that we saw in the earlier slides. And uh, the patterns help you solve problems and, uh, and there are people who have already learned to solve uh, those specific problems in certain ways. So it's, 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 it's good to use those patterns in those ways. And then uh, there, are, there, there are cases where there are sc scalability and efficiency concerns. So uh, it, happen that uh, you go ahead and write a completely fine working program, but then in the end you will find that uh, the program has scalability issues. So some of the patterns actually address that. So learning that is going to be useful for you. So here are uh, the different design patterns on this slide. Uh, and I will give you a brief overview of these. Uh, and uh, these will be covered as part of the module. Uh, in, in the subsequent classes. So uh, today we'll discuss the summarization patterns. This, these are the patterns which use when you want to have a high-level view of the data. Uh, so in, in a lot of analytics uh, 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 tasks that you do, uh, the first thing that you do is trying to understand the data from a very high level. And that's where summarization patterns come into the picture. Uh, we'll see examples of this in this class. Now you have the filtering patterns. Uh, so so a summarization pattern when they are giving you high level view of the data, they are actually calculating some kind of a statistic on top of that. Okay, what, what you ultimately get out of it is, is slightly uh, different data than you had originally. Then you have uh, a filtering patterns. Uh, by the name, uh, it, it does say something. So in filtering patterns, uh, the idea is to filter a subset of uh, uh, the bigger data set uh, and uh, something which is more interesting uh, you, you filter those things out and perform uh, further analytics on those things. The filtering patterns, which we'll talk about uh, tomorrow, is going to be about that. Data organization patterns. Uh, in these patterns, uh, uh, let me give you an example. So, uh, so, so these patterns don't exist in isolation. They are part of a bigger system. So uh, it could be that you have a system where, which, which deals with more, more uh, unstructured data. So uh, a data which is more in hierarchical form. So uh, for example, if you take Twitter data and then you, you try to combine this with some data which is coming from a structured source, uh, in such cases you'll go ahead and use a data organization pattern. Uh, so what happens in those patterns is uh, you're, you're, you, you might have a, a set of sources of the data, which is which is uh, very structured, 
and then uh, systems that you have down uh, down the pipeline they need more uh, more uh, hierarchical data to be able to do efficient computation on them so that's where uh, you uh, will go ahead and uh, use patterns uh, regarding data organization we'll discuss the joint patterns uh, so in, in joining uh, you 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 get more value of the data when you combine uh, the data which come out of two different uh, sources so uh, that's what joint patterns will be about we'll discuss different cases in that meta patterns uh, they are not uh, really patterns in the true sense uh, uh, of the word that we have seen so far meta patterns are actually about more about job chaining okay so uh, uh, providing more job control to you by by doing the job chaining that's what meta patterns are about and uh, they're going to be useful in 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 trying to implement if you're trying to implement a graph algorithm using using map reduce then these patterns will also come into picture then you have the input and the output patterns uh, so uh, they are uh, meant Customizing some of the some of the way you read your inputs into your programs and uh, customize outputs that you write uh, to the output. Graph patterns. Uh, these are very interesting patterns, and uh, uh, you will also be doing a project on this. So uh, the different. So, so for example, the page rank algorithm, and 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 that's w w one of uh, the modules in your in your project work. That uh, graph pattern, uh, uh, the, the page rank algorithm, will implement a mass here. And then we have uh, others here, for example, pairs and stripes. Uh, so pairs and stripes is useful in cases uh, of text analytics. For example, uh, we, we calculate a lot of bigrams and digrams uh, when we are doing analytics on text. So uh, pairs and stripes are useful in such cases because uh, they output pairs of words which are adjacent to each other. 